Hey guys, welcome to the show. This is JMP Talk Time. Today's video is titled Doxing a Jury, What Could Go Wrong? <laughs> okay, Phil, so do you remember you remember the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So during this trial, a very special uh news agency uh had a little escapade and uh I have the police footage from that. I thought we could uh, watch that. Are you from Wisconsin, sir? Yeah. Huh? No. Where are you from? Atlanta. Atlanta? Okay. All right. I mean, Dunwoody is my official, but I flew up from Atlanta. You flew up from oh. what, what, what's, uh, what's the significance of you being here? I work for NBC. For NBC? NBC? Yeah. Okay. You're a reporter? Producer. Producer? Okay. Yes. All right. So you, were you following a vehicle? I was trying to see. I was being called by New York going, maybe need to follow up, but I, I don't know. I was trying to... You trying to what? Just do what they told me to do. New York told you to follow a vehicle? Yeah. Your, what, your office is in New York or what? That's right. How did they know about this vehicle? I mean, it was discreet. I wasn't like, you know, you know talk to anybody. Just trying to find a location. That's all. Do you have the, the person who told who called you and told you to do this? Yeah. You want to give me his information real quick? Give me a call. Sure. Hi, this is Officer Jones, Kenosha Police. Kind of, we're trying to figure out what's going on here. Why you have a reporter or a producer following vehicles out here? Hi, Officer. My name is Irene. I'm a booking producer with NBC News. Uh huh. Um, we 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 were just trying to respectfully um, just trying to see if it's um, if it's possible to um, to find any leads about um, about the, the case and so we were we uh, we were just keeping our distance um, just to see like where um, people involved in, in the in the trial um, are positioned there by no means were we trying to get in contact with any of any of the jury members or whoever's in the car we just were um, trying to see like where um, mm -hmm. where key players in the trial may be at we're gonna ask you guys to not do that all right that's a concern here this is huge we can't afford anything crazy happening um putting people in in dangerous positions um this individual violated some traffic laws here doing this so we're going to ask you guys to refrain from doing that got it understood thank you so much i'm very sorry we're very sorry i'm very sorry you have any ties to, to this community sir i love this community I've covered a lot of golf, Whistling Straits, not the Kenosha community itself. Mm -hmm. Negative. You do not have any ties here. He's from out of state. All right. Uh, I apologize. Irene, what's your what's your uh, position? Uh, booking producer. Booking producer. Okay. That's the end. So, uh, to provide a little context, um, basically during the trial, they were busing the juries from the courthouse, or maybe not the courthouse, but wherever they had the trial, back to, you know, wherever they parked their cars or if they were staying in a hotel, I don't remember which. Uh, during, when they were leaving the uh, trial area and getting bussed back to wherever they came from, uh, this individual, <clears throat> seen in the police footage, uh, was pulled over when he ran a red light following the bus. I liked at the end where the officer asked him if he has any ties to the community. I, I did. I did enjoy. Oh, that yeah, part. where he's like, um, yeah, I reported on some golf or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the officer's like, so no, you don't. <laughs> something like that yeah he, <laughs> he like listened to him for like a full 30 seconds and then he's like on his radio like he doesn't have any ties to the community <laughs> <laughs> a person who identified himself as james g morrison for N msnbc and under the supervision of someone named irene bayon in new york uh, for msnbc stated that he had been instructed by ms bayon in New York to 
follow the jury bus, and he was ticketed for uh, uh, violating a traffic control signal. I have instructed that no one from MSNBC News will be permitted in this building. Yeah, so uh, they got banned from the courtroom. So I'm trying to think, what what are they trying to do? They're trying to break something. Are they trying to figure out where it is so a reporter can go stand outside where they're staying could, and report could, on it? Yeah, yeah, it could be that. It, it's hard to say exactly what their intentions are, but it, it seems like it. if you're following a bus, a sealed bus, as the judge put it, your ultimate goal is to unmask whoever's in that bus. Well... Um, I mean, what I, what I think this speaks to Phil is, um, uh, the importance of, uh, avoiding mob mentality. Cause I think, I think probably what happened is like the producer or the freelancer, there was so much hysteria around this, uh, case and it was being misrepresented so much in my opinion. Um, and the, I guess the jury agreed with me, but is being met, represented so much that if you like have that cycle of where oh it this guy's horrible you know we got to get him you know you you start to be able to like justify the means and if you're surrounded by those individuals then uh it comes off as you're doing the right thing i'm, I'm trying to think of other jury leaks i haven't I haven't kept up with the news enough. Well, no, I mean I've I've kept up with the news the right amount. It's um, I don't watch it. <laughs> yeah, so, you're much happier. I mean, what you said about like not following the news, I think that just kind of speaks to what I was saying earlier about like not getting in that mob mentality and not being radicalized because like what the news reports is like such extremes that uh, it, it's hard to not get radicalized if you follow the news closely. As far as I could tell, no charges were filed. Um, I do believe they did lose their jobs. They're saying they're producers. So right. at least they're, they're identifying themselves as pretty high up there. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't really understand how the hierarchy of journalism works either way. So, I mean, if you say you're a producer... It could just be like, oh, I'm in charge of like four or five people. This is a response from NBC. While the traffic violation took place near the jury van, the freelancer never contacted or intended to contact the jurors during deliberations and never photographed or intended to photograph them. NBC's mm -hmm. news public relations team said in a non-denial denial. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, this this is the kind of stuff you end up doing if you get uh, radicalized. It's basically like when you're in a state of mind where you you don't really listen to what other people are saying. If if they oppose you, you don't really hear what they say. If they're with you, you just kind of nod in agreement. Have you ever, have you ever, um, had a moment like maybe you said something like uh, controversial? And you said it like with such certainty and someone was like, Oh, how do you know that? And you're just like, well, I don't know. <laughs> I oh, haven't really, yeah, I haven't sure, really thought yeah. about it. Like, Oh <laughs> shoot. Maybe I should think about this. <laughs> I think I remember, I remember doing that a couple of times. I'm like, man, it's making me feel so dumb because I don't even know why I believe what I believe. It feels nice to be certain. Right. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like you're 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 in a safe space basically. It's very yeah. safe there. And uh when people come come uh knocking and uh providing counter evidence, uh you know, it's not very fun for your brain. Your brain mm -hmm. kind of freaks out a little bit and says, "Well, I don't feel so safe no more." <laughs> I don't know. How do, how do you think how do you think we help people who are in a mob mentality mindset? Um, I mean... Because it's... Here, here's the issue. When you're in it, you don't know you're in it. Oh, yeah, that's true. That That's maybe the biggest problem. So 
we're here going, oh, well, you know, we're not in it. We can help people. Yeah, well, the the best way to know you're you're in it is you have no idea you're in it. Well, what do you think the signs are that you're in it? Like, if you were to say, hey, look for these things. Anger. Anger? Yeah, I think anger is the main So, one. maybe, like, high emotions? Yeah. Yeah. I would say uh, a lot of... A lot of... Um, it, it, I, I guess there are, like, different forms of mob mentality, but, like, say, like, a mob, like, uh, you know, burning down a store or something... There's a uh, di- there's a diminished amount of feeling of responsibility, and mm-hmm. so like you're kind of hidden among the crowd, and then it's kind of like, well, my actions don't matter as much. Like no one's gonna really hold me responsible, and just from having like sheer numbers, like it j- it's just kind of like an uh, it's kind of like a conscious thing that just kind of kicks in. Mm-hmm. I think there's something, there's this twist that's gone on in our society where it's, we have to make a judgment on every situation. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of this is social media has done this. So basically there's what maybe throughout the day, there's maybe what, 10 news events or so. Well, we've convinced ourselves we can make insightful judgments on every single one of those news events. There's a lot of pride involved yeah. in all this. Yeah. Because it's there's a lot of, we think, oh, just because things are a certain way around here, and I've seen things a certain way, mm-hmm. that everywhere, that that's how every situation played off. And I can put every situation like that I already know the parameters of the situation. I already know the outcome. I know what took place. You're basically saying not admitting when you don't have enough information to make a judgment. Yeah. And that goes back to what I was thinking too was like uh, what I was saying earlier about like when you don't know why you believe what you believe. Um, Mm -hmm. when, When you just like say something as a fact and then someone asks you like why do you believe that? And you you can't come up with a good answer. And that's a, yeah. Well, that's it, a time when you need to go like reassess and be like, well, maybe I don't know. Yeah, it, it it's a bad sign if you start getting angry hmm. when somebody asks is asking questions. Um, because usually that means you don't know what you're talking about. Now that's I mean I'm speaking generally, mm-hmm. but. When you start getting angry, it's like, well, wait a minute. You know, if they're just asking questions, then let them ask questions. Yeah. And it's, it's kind of like you also have like this, um, it's like this emotional state tied into it. Like when someone starts questioning your beliefs, it, it sure, yeah. gets like really high emotions really quickly. Going back to like the high emotions we were talking mm-hmm. about earlier. And uh, I don't know, like... It's kind of one of those things that I think you just have to, it has to be worked on with practice. Like, but it like, it like comes back, like if you're not used to it, it's like your emotions like ramp up really fast, really quickly. Uh Yeah. But if you like, if you're having like a lot of these conversations with people who have different beliefs and uh, that have different beliefs that they have gotten from like different experiences in their life, then like, it's not really that big of a deal. It's just like, okay. Yeah, we're all screwed, basically. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> like, I mean, I think there's, I think at the same time, like, uh, you know, people are getting more extreme and more dug in. Like, at the same time, like, some people are, like, pushing back and being like, well, I'm going to delete my Facebook and delete my social media. Yeah, I'm well. I'm not going to follow the news. Like, if you, if you watch CNN's, like, viewer numbers, like, you see them just dropping Oh, well, CNN's just one scandal after another. Oh, yeah, so. yeah. But, well, most of them, are, I guess. But. Well, they they were, like, back in the day, I think I think it was, like, the Gulf War that they, like, broke. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were, like, the ones who were, like, boots on the ground were actually covering it and had, like, a lot of real footage. And so that's, like, 
that's basically how they uh, built their empire is they had um, mm. a bunch of reputable journalists who were, you know, extremely like, uh, you know, truth driven, accurate in all the reporting. And then they were uh, one of the few news agency that was actually be able to like cover the war in person. Well, let's <laughs> let's none of us follow juries. Yeah. Um. <laughs> And try to expose where they're staying. Let's just none of us yeah. do that. Right? You know, uh, I feel that's a safe lesson. Take for up us knitting, here. archery, uh, mm. walking, like anything, but don't mm. walk. You know, after yeah, the don't jury. walk towards where where you think the jury is going. Yeah, don't walk there. <laughs> yeah, rollerblading's good too. But yeah. again, you could you might you know those buses move kind of slow sometimes in cities. You might. <laughs> You know, like latch <laughs> onto one beside. and just like roll <laughs> along with it. <laughs> I, I like that MSNBC got embarrassed and got thrown out of the courtroom. Yeah, that was pretty funny. I like stuff like, I like they were, that. They were saying they were a lot of the misinformation was coming from them too. No. Just yeah, flat out mm-hmm. lies. I believe it. I believe it. I don't know anything about it, but yeah, I believe it. I did. I thought it was weird. I was watching the trial and I thought it was weird. Like how many facts they would get wrong. And I'm like, this is like, mm-hmm. this is like getting to a level where it's um, grossly negligent, like everybody's drunk or, yeah. you know, they're purposely doing this with malicious, malicious intent. You remember that one Trump supporter, that kid, there was a video of him standing in front of an Indian. Oh Yeah like a native american and he had his maga mm-hmm. hat on he ended up suing cnn and got a bunch of money yeah i heard about yeah. that good for him because basically they they cut the footage to make it look like he was some jerk who walked up on these is it that Indians. crazy and uh when that, you look at the that's yeah the... when you look at the full footage it's like the indian who <laughs> guy came up and kind of got into his face and uh I, I don't know if i'd say get in his face but he's like in his personal space and the reason why he has yeah. that look on his face is because he's like, he's in an awkward situation. He doesn't know what else to do. He's kind of doing like that weird smirk. Yeah. yeah that, that's what was so crazy was they had the whole video. Mm. So it's not like they didn't have the right. video. They just like, were like, oh, we're going to edit it like this. And this is, yeah, go screw I yourselves. mean, this goes back to like, you know, manipulating titles and articles. You can manipulate people's outlook too by omitting things oh absolutely i mean i mean we we experience it um firsthand um doing interviews oh yeah um what you know if we weren't trustworthy what could we make somebody say (laughs) and the the thing is you could make them say about anything you wanted them to say (laughs) You want them to say Hitler was great and he had the right idea? Yeah, you could edit <laughs> All that. All you got to get him to do is get him to say Hitler and he was really great at some point during a two-hour conversation. Yeah. Uh, I think we should wrap it up there, Phil. You good? Okay. You good? Yeah, uh-huh. All right. Don't be like these people. Bye. <laughs>